Hi, this is Richard from Animate.com. In this video we are looking at Blender's Shader Node Editor, especially on Texture Coordinates. Textures are a way to vary a property of a shader from point to point on a 3D surface. There are two-dimensional textures, like images, and three-dimensional textures, which are mainly mathematical functions that use the x, y and z coordinates of space as variables to produce a number, a value, which can vary from point to point in space. These texture coordinates adjust the alignment and positioning of the texture on the surface or in space. We will have a look at the different types of texture coordinates and when to use them, and eventually we will create a mask using these coordinates to blend between two textures. So let's start. Let's start with our default cube and have an image texture mapped onto it. For this, I enlarge the timeline area and change the area to the shader editor. We already have a principal BSDF shader present. If we now add an image texture, I use Shift A to get the menu at mouse pointer. We can connect the texture to the shader's base color. Right away we see the texture mapped on the cube according to its UV map. 2D textures have to be stretched out along the surface creating seams, while 3D textures won't show seams in general. If we look closely we see a vector input slot in the image texture node. That's where we can redefine the texture coordinates for our image texture. Let's add a texture coordinate node from input texture coordinate and connect its first output to the image texture vector input. It will use object's local space coordinates to map the texture. We didn't see any change. Let's try the other types of coordinates and see what they do. Normal will show just one pixel of the texture since the whole face has the same normal so every point of the surface is mapped onto the same spot on the texture. Only if we would switch to smooth shading would we see some variation of the map as the normal changes over the cube's face. This normal is useful if we do advanced vector math. We will do so in later sessions on texture coordinates. Next is UV map, which just refers to the active UV map. Notice that there is a small icon to indicate which the active UV map is, since mesh objects can have up to 8 UV maps in Blender. If you need to specify another map than the active one, you can define that explicitly in the dedicated UV map node, found in Input UV Map. For deforming objects, you always need UV maps to deform with the mesh, to stay put onto the surface. Any deforming modifier will change the other texture coordinates on a surface point as they are set in the geometric space in which the deformation changes the point's location. Especially animated characters always have to use UV maps as their armature changes the mesh within local object space. UV maps are the only texture coordinates in Blender that stay on deformed meshes as the deformation changes. Object refers to the local coordinates of an object, either the currently selected object or another one which we can select in the field below. This is great for 3D textures if we want to move the texture with the object as it's moving. We can also map an image texture using object coordinates if we set the projection to box, then the image is mapped according to the direction a polygon is facing. The blend parameter can fade between the different axes to avoid visible hard seams. The origin of our object has the object coordinate 000. Camera and window are two coordinate types that rather map background images onto the viewport's frame, while the type camera will scale down the texture as the camera gets farther away from the mesh surface. The window type will map the texture once into the full area of our rendered frame, no matter how far away we are from the camera. We rarely use these types of texture coordinates as they have very specific use. Reflection is a coordinate type to map a texture as if this texture gets reflected on the mesh surface. 
if we need any special reflection that's not reflecting the actual surrounding geometry, then this is a convenient way to map a reflected image. Additional, you can use the global position of a surface point when you add a geometry node found in input geometry and use the position slot. When the object moves now, the texture sticks to global space and shifts along the surface. Why would we need such global sticky coordinates? For example, if the material is used on many similar objects, it's a quick way to get different variation at different locations. When these objects are not moving, it's like with object coordinates but different textures and materials per object. A forest can use trees with varying noisy clouds for shadow and saturation to get variation in the field of duplicated trees. To use masks, we can utilize the coordinates and quickly get a gradient along one direction. To get one direction, we can use a separate XYZ node found in Convert Separate XYZ. Each slot will output the position of a surface point on that axis. So these create gradients along their axis and we can use them on the surface of our mesh. To get an arbitrary direction as mask, we can use the normal node found in Vector Normal and connect its dot output. It's using the dot product which we will learn about in the third video. We can fine-tune that gradient by using a map range node or a color ramp node, both found in Convert Color Ramp and Convert Map Range. We can directly use this ramp as variation for a property. For example, we can mix two textures using a Mix RGB node. So I hope you learned something about texture coordinates in Blender. The next video will be about the world background and its texture coordinates. Happy blending. Bye.